how's it going everybody? Rasati out here in Singapore and it is another episode of the Night Owl Podcast and I'm actually really excited because I'm kind of amped up, I'm kind of fired up, it's about 2.30 in the morning and um, and we just finished up season 3 of the originals. This is the second time I'm watching, but Baby Girl is watching with me and it was really interesting to see um, the conversation between Cammy and Klaus as she was passing away. So if you aren't familiar, I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but um, the point being that there is a, a there is a procedure or, or a way of connecting to someone as they are passing away, especially if you're a vampire, to connect to them and their dreams to kind of give them like a, a little bit of a, a romanticized moment if you will so that they can you know live out their last few moments in peace and happiness and it was in that moment that Camille decided she wanted to speak to Klaus about a couple of things to help him prepare for not being around her anymore so it was something that she she mentioned that I thought was really interesting and I wanted to kind of expound on it um so she was mentioning the fact that she always thought she was a bartender in her life and she always thought that people just needed a couple of drinks to be able to open their guts and spill, you know, just talk about what was really on their mind and kind of get them things off their chest. But what she realized was it wasn't the alcohol that did that. They've been wanting to talk to someone anyway. They just needed to know that someone was going to be around to listen. And I feel that. I feel that on a lot of different levels. A lot of times I thought when I was um, when I was growing up and even um, once I moved back to Singapore, I thought, you know what, the only way that I can have, have fun and really let loose is if I was a little drunk. I needed some alcohol because then I could let go of all of my um, my control and my um, <laughs> my prudence, uh, my pride, and I could actually let loose and have fun. And the other thing on the flip side of that was if anything happened that I might be embarrassed about, I could blame it on the alcohol, right? That's the song too. We just blame it on the alcohol. But the point being that I really, more than anything else, wanted to go dancing or I wanted to go sing at the top of my lungs and not be judged by any of those people that may not enjoy my particular brand of singing or my particular brand of dancing, like any of those things. It was an excuse to go out and have fun, but also an excuse to kind of excuse my behavior in case it was offensive in any way. So I think a lot of times when people get drunk and then end up, you know, confessing and talking about their feelings and stuff, a lot of times it's because they feel safe in that inebriated moment. They feel safe enough to open up because they can be so drunk that they don't remember that they opened up to you or they can excuse themselves and say, hey, you know, what? I, I was drunk. I'm sorry. I was I was not in my right frame of mind. Um, I didn't mean to say those things. It's an easy apology. It's an easy way to recant everything you've said. And I feel that it's a sad state of affairs because we go through so much of life using these excuses to either numb out or to pardon us from the mistakes that we're about to make instead of living the way we really want to live. How many of us, how many of us use alcohol as an excuse to do something that we've, we've been dying to do anyway? We would probably do in the house if no one was watching. But that's not the way to live. And honestly, that's the reason I stopped drinking. I'd forgotten how to be courageous enough to get up in the middle of a, a party and start dancing. I had forgotten what it was like to just break out in song and not feel embarrassed or self-conscious about what I was doing. It was the self-conscious part. I was very aware of what I was doing. I was very aware of the fact that other people's eyes would be on me, that they would be judging possibly or whispering about me. And I didn't want to feel that before because I've, I've been there. I've been there where people judged me and bullied me and talked shit about me and ran my name through the dirt and tried their best to destroy me every chance they got. And it was not fun. And so going forward, I had to stay out of the limelight or became this very, very quiet person when no one even knew I existed. I was like the ultimate wallflower. Until I realized I was missing out on so much of life because I'd restricted myself. I was so scared of going out and just dancing and having fun that restricting myself meant that I was being less and less of who I was. So eventually I stopped drinking and I started going out by myself, for myself. And when I felt the need, I danced. And when I didn't, I didn't. It was all about working up the nerve to go do what I wanted to do, no matter where I was. And it was a tough, tough pill to swallow. But the whole point of that, all of that example is to say this. I need you guys to be more yourselves than ever before. I need you guys to really question why you need the alcohol. I see you guys. I hear you guys. 
all of you all of you on Twitter talking about you really want just to go out and drink with the boys. You miss the taste of uh, Shivas. You want to go to Platinum. You want to just drown your sorrow. I get it. Y'all are in pain. I get it. But alcohol doesn't do anything. It doesn't change where you are. It doesn't alter your reality. And if it does, it's only for a few moments. And then you're back to square one. You're back to facing what really is. You guys, alcohol is a depressant, if you didn't already know. The point being, I would rather you question why you need those things. What is it you're really looking for? I know most of you are looking for a connection, to feel like you belong somewhere, that somebody understands you. But guess what? No one is going to understand all of you. No one. You don't understand all of you. My brother and I, we grew up in the same house together. We talk about the same movies, the same music, but we've spent a lot of time apart as well. We've had moments where, you know, he was in one country and I was in another. And so he discovered more music and he discovered other movies and he discovered other things that he was really good at. He likes to whittle wood, as in like carve wood. I didn't know that about him. And I don't understand carving wood, but I can imagine that it's quite peaceful. But, you know, I'm not going to sit around and watch that kind of stuff. I have stuff that I want to do, too. He doesn't understand some of the choices I've made in my life. And he doesn't understand why I like Mexican food so much or why I like cooking, you know, Creole or, or soul food so much. But he does love it. He enjoys it. As much as he knows about me, there's so many things he doesn't understand. And he is the closest person on earth to me. My daughter and I, she is cleared from my flesh. She is made from me. She's a spitting image of me, and I'm so grateful. And as much as she loves me, and she is left-handed like me, and she is dyslexic and has attention situations just like me, she's not like me. She doesn't understand. She doesn't think the same way that I do. She does not process information the same way that I do. And so I constantly am trying very hard to understand how she thinks so that I can teach her better. My ex-husband, I thought he knew me pretty well. I, ho I thought I opened up to him and I told him, you know, my deepest, darkest fears and everything. And I thought he took them to heart and understood where I was coming from. But no, nah, there are some people out there that will take what you tell them and understand that because you've been through it one time means that you might be okay with going through it again. So they take it as, you know, under advisement and they keep it in their files for later use. Some people, when you tell them the dark demons that you've faced before they're like oh my god i will do everything in my power never to let her face that ever again and if she does she won't be alone when she faces it there are many different kinds of people out there and yes you want connection what you need to understand is no one's going to connect with you a hundred percent they're not meant to you don't learn anything from connections like that when they're exactly like you what is there left to to grow how do you grow how do you learn more you can't be with each other a hundred percent hundred percent of the time you need your own spaces you need together time and you need your own spaces so when i talk about the fact that you know you use alcohol as an excuse to open up think about this you want someone you can open up to you want to know that someone would be there to listen to you when you're sober it's not because you're drunk it's because you want to speak up you want that connection you want that intimacy sex is not going to give it to you Sex is just merely a physical touch. A hug feels good while you're hugging. Well, guess what? You release that embrace at some point, and then what? Go back to square one? Drinking feels good when you're drinking. But at some point, you have to wake up from that stupor and get back to life. Which is why everyone is waiting for the weekend and is always pissed off that Monday comes. Why? Because it's only in that inebriated state that you allow yourself to open up. Because... If it goes bad, if it goes south, you could be like, oh no, I blame it on the alcohol, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't even mean any, any of that stuff. Why? Because you're afraid of losing face. Because you're so afraid somebody might judge you. How do you find intimacy if you don't open up though? Look, I've done it too. It was hard to give up alcohol. It was hard for me not to use anything to help me connect. I used to think that if my husband actually wanted to have sex with me, that I was attractive to him. No, that's not what it was at all. People can go through the motions and not be connected to you. I didn't want that connection. I wanted intimacy. I wanted someone that was going to be ride or die with me. Which means, yeah, we're going to fight. 
but we're still going to remain together. We're going to still walk side by side. We may not hold hands sometimes. And sometimes we may hold hands and hug each other and just be lovey-dovey everywhere. But I want you there regardless. That's the kind of connection I'm looking for. And I know damn well that's the connection you're looking for. So, the next time you go to numb out, think about that. What is it you're actually looking for? What is it you want, really? As kids, we're really good about, oh my gosh, my husband would be like this, and my wedding would be like that. We're really good about dreaming about what it is that we want. As adults, we're told not to dream so much. Let's be real, okay? Let's be practical. Is that even something that you can really get? That's what we're told, right? All day, every day? Oh no, don't go after your dream job. Do something practical. Oh no, you can't be a singer-songwriter. That's not really a job. Go get a degree in mechanical engineering and go do a job you hate first because that's a guaranteed paycheck. People tell us not to dream all the time. But guess what? When you dream... You're able to talk about what it is you want. You're able to name what it is you want. And once you can name what you want, then all you got to do is reverse engineer it. How do you get to that place? Do you understand the risks that take, that you have to take to be able to get to that place? Where you have a ride or die, where you have that happily ever after kind of marriage. Where you have somebody who would fight for you. Who wouldn't let you leave the house without chasing you down, being like, no, I don't want you to leave like this. I don't want us to go to bed mad. I don't want us to argue like this. This is really stupid. It's not going to matter in five years. Let's think about this. You know you want that. You want someone who will fight for you and fight with you and fight beside you. That's what we all want. But what are you willing to do to get there? Because alcohol is not going to help. Sex is not going to help. Drugs will never help. Eating your feelings doesn't help. You might as well deal with what's really going on. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comment field below. If you really want to talk about this, like let's set up a game plan and get through to wherever it is you want to be because you're sick of life where you are at the moment, DM me. You know how to get in touch. And until then... Find more and more excuses to smile. Find more and more excuses to feel good about yourself. Do those things on a daily basis. Don't wait for the weekend. And no, I'm not saying go drink every night. I'm saying find ways for you to smile and laugh genuinely without the help of a drug. Alcohol is a drug. Okay? Because I care. Because I want you to get that intimacy. The one you're craving. Alright you guys, I love you. And I'll catch you soon. Bye.